Everyone's favorite grumpy cat is back and in a big way. You ever jumped a train? I've never jumped. Here's that stop. Really? Where? The Garfield movie is officially making its way to theaters this weekend. Chris Pratt voices the iconic cat, and our favorite film critic, Rad, is voicing himself. He had a chance to catch up with the actor ahead of the film's release. We are teaming up with Sony Pictures Canada to take a closer look at the movie. Rad is joining us now. Good morning to you. Now I want to be voiced by Lindsay. I know. Rad is being voiced by <laughs> and Lindsay Rad will be today. Voiced by Rad. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. We're going to put up a QR code on your screen right now. This is exciting. Just scan the QR code to buy tickets to see the film. Okay, so Rad, first, let's quickly talk about what the movie is about. What can audiences expect? I mean, look, look, it's a Garfield movie, right? It's a movie that will uh, satisfy the kids who love their despicable me's and their secret lights of pets, which are, of course, movies that live in the shadow of Garfield, right? In the shadow of this character who we were introduced to on a mm -hmm. comic strip, right? Yeah. Uh, this this character uh, that that, uh, that 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 loves lasagna and hates Mondays. And, <laughs> and this movie is it's about it gives us the origin story. You're seeing the origin story right now of how mm. Garfield met. John, the owner, he kind of keeps on a leash. It also gives us uh, the story of how Garfield was actually abandoned by his street cat dad, who was voiced by cool cat Samuel Jackson. And it's about how the, the, the Garfield reunites with his long lost dad, who ropes him in to a heist. Cool. Yeah. Oh, look at this footage. Okay, so you chatted with Chris Pratt, mm -hmm. the Chris Pratt. We are going to show a couple of clips this morning from that conversation. This first one is about the snarky attitude Garfield is known for. Take a look. You know, when I when I think of Garfield, I, I I think specifically of like this adorable snark that he had, right? Like he had a very specific brand of humor. And you yeah. know, when I when I think about that humor, I think about like, well, like that kind of paved the way for so many things after it, right? Like that 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 kind of adorable snark. Like I feel like you see that in The Simpsons. I think certainly that era comedy was changing, and there's a high, a high likelihood because of. It's ubiquity, uh, a comic strip like Garfield helped shape comedy in the mm -hmm. West and how we saw it. And Snark became apparent, like you said, it did go through to, from The Simpsons and through Friends, you know, Chandler Bing is almost like a kind of like a Garfield kind of a character, a lot of sarcasm and stuff like that. So what is it about Garfield's personality that you think people relate to the most? Well, I mean, like, look, I think that, like, the snark, but also, like, his laziness is all of us, okay? <laughs> and, and it's in that conversation, we were talking about, well, you think about Garfield, he was born in the 80s, right? He's, or, like, seven, late 70s, 80s, at the time of Reaganomics, he's very much a response, this character is a response, this idea of that time where it's, like, this go get him attitude, working our nine-to-five jobs, going back to our big suburban home, mowing the lawn, doing Jane Fonda workouts. Oh, and Garfield, all the time. All the time. Was, yes, right? we had the VHS. And Garfield was just like, nah, I'm not, nah, right? Like, yeah. like, like, we're not doing the work. We're not doing that. So I think he validated that emotion. He gave way, as like, paved way not just to a certain type of comedy, but also mm -hmm. just like, like you know, the, the slacker genre and this idea of like, no, self care is laziness. Okay, <laughs> yeah. self care is hating Mondays. People could relate to it. Exactly. All right, this next clip is about bringing Garfield to life on the big screen. Thinking about kind of that that original humor and stuff. I mean, I'm just thinking about like even the the process of adapting comic strips to animation, right? I mean, you're taking material that was like, you know, like where they would set up the jokes in a handful of frames to now you have motion and you have like, a, you know, you have a much bigger canvas. Talk to me about that, about like kind of bringing that comic strip, to like the three to eight frame sensibility to 24 frames per second. You know, anytime you adapt something, ultimately if you're a big studio and you're trying to make a movie and you want to have a bunch of reach, you adapt something that has a lot of reach, but it doesn't automatically make it a good movie. I mean, the Lego movie's a great, uh, uh, case study, right? Like, what's that movie supposed to be about? Ultimately, it comes down to storytellers crafting a narrative and focusing on which relationships are going to be uh, the, the most meaningful relationships in these characters' lives. And so, and with Garfield, it's his relationship with Vic, this uh, scruffy sc street cat, his biological father, who he unexpectedly meets. Okay, so speaking of adapting, Brad, how has Garfield adapted to modern times in this movie? Well, I mean, like, I mean, there's the obvious ways that this is Garfield 2024, where, mm -hmm. you know, we meet him using social media, like checking out cool cat videos that don't, of course, uh, replace his own adorableness. And also, like, ordering his lasagna through food apps and oh, drone deliveries, right? But also, like, you know, when I was talking there about, like, the, the three to eight frame sensibility, like, this is a movie that takes kind of the gags that would set up in a comic strip, like, three different, and it finds a way to make that in motion, right? right? So that there's that cool adaptation. But also, in terms of adapting to modern times, this is a generational 
story, right? This is a story of Garfield and his dad, Garfield reconnecting with his dad. And the same way, it's also a generational story with the audience where it's like, you know, adults who grew up with this comic strip, with this character are now bringing their children to Garfield. Mm -hmm. And even my daughter, she was like, she saw the trailers like, dad, we're going. There's no ifs or buts about it. Like basically, like you know, commanding me like Garfield commands John. So the Garfield energy is very, very it's real for you in your life. Living within this new generation. Yes, <laughs> it's true. It's like, oh, Rad, thanks so much for this. How exciting! Thanks, Rad. Garfield is in theaters on Friday. Rad, thanks. Your morning is brought to you in part by the Garfield movie now playing. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.